interesting yeah and uh, i am looking forward uh, to see this working um yes uh, i want us to start working on um i want us to start working on geomorphology uh, the topic uh, the yes they are great uh, so yeah i don't know you can shout out if you can see my presentation on the screen and then uh, hopefully i will also do it uh, tomorrow as well uh, yes and, um, my objectives for this lesson would be um, to describe the formation of different landscapes, state characteristics and processes associated with um, development of different landscapes. Remember that we have your uh, topography associated with your uh, horizontal linear works. Uh, are the ones with um, inclined strata and we have massive um, rocks, yes. So we're also going to have to describe the landscape retreat, explain also how time, I mean how climate, time and plate tectonics um, affect the formation of the landscapes. Right, and uh, we're gonna focus, or rather put a focus on topography associated with horizontally layered rocks, topography associated with inclined or tilted rock strata, topography associated with massive igneous rocks. Right, then, uh, let me start my lesson with you now. Um, what is geomorphology? Let us study three. And uh, try to break the term geomorphology in simple terms, uh, I mean, to three terms. Whereby we have the geo, we have the morph, and we have ology. The geo uh, rather deals with um, the shape, I mean, the earth. Then we have morph, which refers to the shape. We have ology, which refers to the study. So in short, one can say that geomorphology is the study of the Earth's shape. Uh, I know that this will actually differ, uh, but then they are also correct. Ne? Now, the factors affecting uh, the formation of landscape. The first one, we have plate tectonics. Now the plate tectonics, they trigger the process that brings rocks to the surface of the earth or cause an uplift of the land surface. Now they can cause, uh, they can cause folding faulting, and other volcanic activities. Okay. Right, now remember from grade 10, you dealt about the plate tectonics. We have uh, different ones. We have the constructive ones, we have the divergent, and we have um, the destructive ones, you remember? Constructive ones will be those ones that would move side to side. Uh, and in most cases, um, on those ones, we don't find rocks coming up to the earth surface, you know. And then we have the destructive ones, uh, and so on. Now we're also going to look at the climate, which is another factor. Now on the climate, the climate affects processes that change solid rocks into sediments. <laughs> now. Remember, climate, we are referring to uh, the change 
in weather patterns over a long period of time. Okay? So yes, those are some of the things that we are looking at. So uh, this change in this weather patterns, they tend to have a certain force. Uh, if there is pressure, I mean, Luana, you know, right now, if ever uh, you, you stand in front of your heater, there, there would be a change in pressure in Maso and Wadalukhanya. Uh, and in the same way, even on rocks, if we apply pressure, they are able to change some, they would even break down uh, when they are exerted to more heat or extreme cold, things like that. And then again, we have erosion, weathering, and mass wasting, which are our examples. Uh, these terms we know we are not going to dwell so much on them. Then we have time. Ah, guys, remember that everything here on Earth revolves around time. Everything on Earth revolves around time. Nothing that we do. Um, <laughs> is outside time. So even for the landscapes or to be formed and whatsoever, they need a specific time. Now time, we say it is the, build, uh, the building up and breaking down. I mean, okay, under time, we understand that these landscapes, they take much time for them to form. You know, they, ju they don't just happen over, t I mean, just uh, in split seconds and whatsoever. The characteristics and processes associated with the development of hilly landscapes. In areas where climate is arid, remember arid, we are talking about dry, meaning in areas where the climate is dry, there is not enough water for sheet wash. Okay. Don't worry, I'm drinking my tea. It's nice and it keeps me awake. Now, in these areas, water will run unevenly down slope, eroding gullies in certain places. The slopes are therefore rugged and uneven. There is little chemical weathering and soil are thin. Okay, let's try to check on this one. We say water will run unevenly down slope. Take it like this. Um, you know, it is dry. And with your bucket of water, you pour, you pour the water down to flow and so on. What happens? Um, you will actually find that you know, more thing, erosion, there and there. And we say, um, that's, I mean, again, the, the slope, meaning wherever it is, more um, for thing. You know, it, it won't be even how 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 whole level if that's how I can put it. So there's just little chemical weathering and soil are thin. Now let's have a look at this picture. You know, it is dry. So imagine ever ula in a for What will happen? Um I mean, when we born, it's not even, it's not level, if that's how we can put it. And anyway, guys, don't forget to post in some questions if you may have, and uh, I'll try to keep on answering some of your questions pertaining this topic. Yeah, um, it is a long topic, and therefore, if ever you don't understand anything, and then you are quiet about it, you may end up not understanding. Right. Characteristics and processes associated with the development of basaltic 
landscapes. Now, in areas where horizontal strata. Now, before we go Kohunzi and whatsoever, horizontal strata already it has given you a characteristic. So already you know how uh, the landscape that we are talking about. It is horizontal. It is straight. Now in areas where horizontal strata are formed from lava flows, basaltic plateaus will form. Let's take a pause. Kana, what is a plateau? I think we have dealt with this um, earlier. Yes, it might, uh, it might have not been with me, but with your teacher, for sure. Must you, you you must know you know a plateau, you know. So yeah. Now we say uh, in areas where horizontal strata are formed from lava flows, basalt will form. Now uh, Rivers will cut into joints and cracks, forming steep cliffs, uh, steep cliffs and deep valleys. Now, check this. In this area, we have these plateaus. Plateaus are high-lying areas which are relatively flat. Now, in this kind of areas, and whatsoever, and then we start to have water flowing and rivers. Now the river, they would cut into the joints where now the, the basalt you, you would understand is one other part of an igneous rock. Now there are joints, you know, on these rocks and whatsoever. So the rivers, they would cut into these joints. They will cut also into the cracks. And then they would form steep cliffs. Uh, you, you usually understand what a steep cliff is. I'm still waiting for your questions, guys. Don't forget to post. And then the deep valleys and the gorge, uh, and the deep valleys, which are called the gorges. Now, let's have a look at this picture. Um, yes. Now, in this picture, we have an example of uh, basaltic plateau. Then uh, the rivers, they have eroded, they've cut into cracks, uh, they have cut into the joints. Now, if you can see, uh, there's this man over here. So if you can see just Mopilakakai, you've got that steep uh, cliff, you know, the steepness, that's where uh, you have it. Uh, let me just wrap up um, and uh, deal with this once. And after this one, uh, would be going off for tonight. And that would be all for tonight, you know. And I uh, hope you would just go back in jail and uh, try to work uh, on them. Yeah? And yes. Now, characteristics are associated with uh, the development of the canyon landscapes. The canyon landscapes. Canyon landscapes develop where horizontal strata have been varying in resistance. Now, remember from my previous slides, I said, uh, the horizontal strata already what should come in your mind is that layer that is relatively flat. Now, for us to have canyons, it is as a result of this horizontal layer having different resistance to erosion. In other words, uh, on some parts, it can easily be eroded, whereas on the other parts, it is hard, like the resistance is high, you know. And then we have examples of Canyons in South, uh, yes, in South Africa. This includes the Fish River Canyon and the Blade River Canyon. Now, canyon landscapes are characterized 
by deep valleys and uneven slopes. Now, right. Now, this is the Blade River. Yes, the Blade, I mean the Fish River. You know, you, you have, if you look here, now you have that valley like about, and then usually if uh, it was to rain, you were gonna have rivers flowing. So these are your canyons. Let's look at the, uh, this one is the Blade River Canyon. See, even uh, same with it, you still have what? Uh, those, um, that river, the valley, you know, remember how the valley we are referring to, you know, the steepness in between two high lying areas. So on this valley, that's where you are to find your, that's where you are to find your rivers, I mean, flowing. That's it for today, guys. Don't forget to post your questions. Uh, tomorrow, I would continue from here. I think at least I would give um, an hour space before uh, I can go live. So that you can enjoy yourself and call your friends and so on. We are still in this thing of great 11 geography. Thank you guys.